So, hello everyone. So, we will continue with the topic evenness in textile material. Okay. So, now we will discuss the measurement techniques, measurement of evenness. So, first method is that by visual examination. So, if we can see properly, if we can see the material visually. So, subjectively we can say this material is even or the this is uneven. So, that visually we can judge. Okay. So, one is that a lap meter, lap meter what is that? Here there will be one board which is from back side illuminated with light okay, white. So, illuminating board and over that we are placing our laps. Although laps are nowadays not being used in the industry, but and here in case of any unevenness patchiness we it can show because if we can control at that point. So, that will give di direct indication whether this is going to create problem or not. Okay. So, that is a lap meter is uh, one technique of measurement of uh, evenness of lap by visual technique and another is yarn appearance board. So, yarn appearance board is very actually widely used in industry and this will give us very actually quick overall assessment of evenness of yarn. It is very simple technique, subjective measuring technique provides important additional information that can be correlated with the appearance to the expected fabric made from a yarn. So, looking at the appearance in the appearance board, we can make out the, the what type of fabric it is going to produce. So, that it is uh, very important and very quickly we can me measure, we can judge grading after viewing the sample of yarn owned on the designated traverse. So, the traversing will be there, uh, there will be a black board on which the yarn is being owned. Okay. So, for colored yarn normally we do not use black board in colored yarn it is a white board on the white board we, we just wind the yarn and depending on the count the thickness of the yarn the traverse rate changes. So, that proper distance proper separation of yarns are there and ASTM as per ASTM there are five different grades. And the board is compared with the standard photographs available, and we can grade them. Okay. Now, this is the typical yarn appearance board winder. The, this is wind, the, the boards are of basically two types one is the rectangular, another is trapezoidal. So, this in this way, so we can simply wind the yarn, okay. this may be automatic or may be manual. So, that we can wind the yarn here and compare with the standard photograph okay, available. Now, so grade A means best quality possible, okay. that means depending it does not depend on the count, okay. it is basically overall grading. So, in that case, there is no large nips, very few small nips. Okay no large nips because few why few no small nips because we are talking about the say this is basically for cotton yarn there will be some nips short fibers will be there there will be some nips. So, we cannot have the grade without any nips. So, there will be some nips must have very good uniformity and less fuzziness means hairiness is less okay. and this is the grade grade A. If it is 
the our present yarn is close to this so that we have to judge subjectively okay similarly little bit inferior than grade a is no large nebs few small nebs less than 3 small piece of foreign matters will be there if it is if at all it is there slightly more irregular so irregularity will be little bit more looking at the board one can make out and fuzzy so it will be little bit uh, hairy so that this is the grade b so if we can compare this we can and we have to place our board in actually uh, beside this so we can compare which grade it is similarly grade 3 will be little bit inferior so f larger quantity of uh, so uh, more nebs will be there higher fuzziness or for foreign matters will be there this is the grade c and grade d is uh, further inferior quality so in this way so grade d is there and grade e below grade d so overall we can uh, see we can compare we can place our board present here so we can grade accordingly so this will give us overall idea about the yarn quality so these are the different grade we can see this is the best quality and this is the poor quality next is that the cutting and weighing method this is very commonly used in industry what we do we we have a material yarn sliver or roving and we cut the material okay with certain known length l so fixed length l for yarn length is different for sliver length is different and for roving there will be different length and even if we want talk about the lap it's different okay so that you cut this material and they then take mass m1 m2 m3 m4 like this and we know the exact mass of the material of a certain length and then we take the standard deviation and then C B percent mean we know standard deviation and then C B percent we can calculate standard deviation by mean into 100. So, this way we will we can calculate the C B percent of mass per unit length why I am telling the mass per unit length repeatedly here it is important because we will see in other automatic instrument we talk about the mass per unit length variation without measuring the mass, but here in cutting and weighing method we actually measure the mass if you ask me the what is the value of average mass then I should be able to tell that this is the value this is the value of the average mass of the material x okay, that value is available. So, that is why cutting and weighing method gives the exact value exact reading, but main problem of this technique is it is a it is a very slow technique. So, for day to day measurement or for large quick measurement it is not possible and also cutting and weighing method another problem is that our length cut is should be sufficient so that we have certain mass. Suppose in this yarn if we want to take want to measure the mass variation of say per centimeter 1 centimeter every 1 centimeter length and we want to measure the C B percent then it will be very difficult. First thing is that we have to cut a large quantity of large number of pieces then we have to take mass we have to take me may calculate mean standard deviation C B percent then 
So, it is not possible and if we want to have quick large uh, number of sample then it is impossible. So, cutting and weighing method is only possible when we have the smaller sample, we have time to um, measure that in those case we can measure this. So, lab to lab variation. So, what we take the mass of lab and then measure the take the whole lab and then measure the mean and C V percent that is a lab to lab variation and lab meter is there where automatically one year length is cut and then measured the mass of that one meter and we can measure the C V percent standard deviation. The weights are recorded subsequently and data analysis is there. Now, for sliver, roving and yarn still it is being used because we need to know the exact value because we need to calculate the count or uh, linear density because we not it not only serves the unevenness measurement, evenness measurement it also measure we by that we can measure the actual linear density of the material that is why here the count or hank and C V percent are checked. So, here C V percent along with the count or count along with the C V percent is measured by measuring a test length and then weighing it accurate by balance. Okay. So, for sliver it is the length specified is 6 year length we can take more than 6 year, but then in that case it cannot be compared. So, if you if we want to compare the C V percent of one material to another material. So, in that case we have to keep the length fixed otherwise if we increase the length then the another type of problem will crop up that I will discuss which is called V L and P L between length variation and within length variation that I will discuss in detail. So, in that case that is why we need to compare the uniformity or irregularity at for a particular specified length. So, for sliver 6 year is the standard length. So, and we wrap, we wrap we actually measure this length by wrap block and for roving it is a 15 year is the standard again we use the same wrap block and for yarn it is 120 years we use wrap reel that we have discussed already when we discussed in the yarn count measurement. Next technique is by measuring the variation in thickness. Okay. So, this material suppose this is sliver here the sliver thickness that if we measure the thickness of the sliver at different portion that will give the idea ind indirect idea of mass variation. There are various techniques of measuring the thickness variation by measuring thickness variation we can measure the, the irregularity of material. So, one of them is that it is called groove and shoe principle. This is actually used for sliver or relatively soft material where number of fibers in the cross section is large because it cannot it is not possible to measure like roving or thinner material here the sensitivity of the instrument is not that fine. So, that larger variation it can measure. So, here the principle is I will just draw here this is a groove ok. This is a groove here in the groove we have we are process passing the sliver material ok. 
now I will draw with other color. So, this is material and this one is groove And now, what we are placing? We are placing one shoe. That is why it is called groove and shoe principle. Here, this is providing some mass weight, and this distance this is the thickness. Here, we are measuring the thickness. Okay. And if I draw the side view of this. this is the control and now here it is a this shoe is ok. Now, and the material is moving it's moving as this material is moving this shoe will have this type of motion which is actually measuring the thickness upward motion okay this type of and this indirectly this we can record if we can record this movement we will actually it's giving the unevenness of material okay this is one principle, this principle is known as the groove and shoe principle. Now, another technique is here, this technique is known as the WIRA, Oira Roving Levelness Tester. Okay, this is used for either roving or sliver soft material uh, the principle wise it is almost similar to the this other technique the groove and shoe principle, but here the recording is better. Okay. Now, and this we are roving levelness tester the principle wise I can just draw. here the roller which is motor driven roller okay. and this is a driven roller motor driven okay, a and here it is a flanged top roller with a flange. So, top roller I am drawing with a red color top roller and which is flanged. Okay. And material, material moves through this in between this. This material is moving okay. and for this any unevenness this roller will move up and down, but the in this instrument the arrangement is there we have to record this. This movement is very very small because the roving thickness if we see the actual roving this is the type material. Here even if we the talk about the variation in thickness and this this deflection will be very small. Now, mechanically this can be actually amplified, this is amplified by this arrangement here, it is a pivoted here and this is okay. here it is pivoted, pivoted here and this 
deflection whatever this deflection here this will get magnified here. This is once it is magnified it is now this movement is actually by the due to the variation in thickness okay, and it is moving and now from here we can record the this thickness variation and the thickness variation is recorded by this is a connector here another arrangement is at this point I will draw with the other color this is the connector and here what we have we have this is fulcrum at this point. Now, this portion is moving up and down this portion will move up and down this is moving up and down this will also move up and down depending on that this is fulcrum here. Now, from here there is a connector here and this is actually driving connecting with the another system and this system it is an L shaped L shaped and which is pivoted at this point this is uh, on rod okay. L shaped link I can just draw this is this is the separate link. Now, here we have different points we can shift it. Now, thing is that now as it is moving up and down this will also move up and down as it is connected here if it is moving up and down this will move up and down okay, the, the sideway this will make sideway movement and with this there is a link and here it is a pin recorder pin is there this is the pin and a chart is moving chart is continuously moving and pin will make lateral movement which is nothing but the variation in the thickness and the chart as chart is moving. So, this will give this type of motion. So, this is actually nothing but the diagram this is giving the variation in the material okay, variation in thickness of the material and if we know the distance exact distance if we and this link arrangement we can calculate the exact thickness variation from this curve and the magnification suppose we want we have a finer material we have sliver we have finer material in case of finer material what we will have our variation in thickness will be very small variation in thickness will be very small. So, that we have to actually amplify. So, there this way we can what we can do here there are different connector here we can change we can shift the connector then if we shift the connector to from this to this then very this will get more deflection. So, higher deflex the deflection we can change by resetting everything. So, this instrument it gives the variation in terms of thickness variation. So, thickness variation we can measure by groove and shoe method or by OERA level levelness tester there are other techniques also which use the thickness under compression one is that Anderson yarn tester. Anderson yarn tester it is actually it is the principle is exactly same here the yarn is tested it is not the compressible material here the yarn is little bit harder material whatever the thickness variation is there that will get actually that is measured here this the recording of yarn thickness variation taken from optical arrangement here actually by using light reflection one can measure the yarn thickness variation. The reflected light beam falls on a strip of moving photographic plate. Okay. So, photographic plate is moving and reflected light pointed light is actually projected on that and trace is generated okay. and this is the technique here 
here this is a shoe and this is anvil the yarn is moving and it is connected with this ok. Here it is a this is the pivot point and just over that there will be one mirror and ray of light is actually falling on it and here it is a photographic plate will be there and as the yarn thickness changes this mirror will get tilted ok depending on the thickness and this ray as it is fixed ray this ray will move ok there will be a movement of this ray and this movement is proportional to the thickness variation. So, that is the principle of Anderson yarn tester. Another measurement is the by using compression it is the yarn diameter actually tester roller yarn diameter tester it is a simple tester where this is the yarn this is the diff, there are different rollers are there and yarn is moving on this depending on the diameter variation and this anvil will move up and down and this can be recorded by using micrometer or maybe by electronic arrangement we can directly measure this thickness variation. Now, next is that uh, most important which is very widely used the it is it works on capacitance principle. Now, in capacitance principle the principle here is that the material moves through slot and slot is between a two capacitor plate ok. Now, this capacitor plate is it is a indirect method of measuring the change in mass per unit area which is very important which we should remember. So, in other methods as we have discussed those are the direct method. In capacitance method although it is a very widely used, but here the method of measurement is totally indirect. Now, these are the capacitance plate capacitor plate. Now, if the and it has got certain dielectric constant ok. Now, when once the material is there in between material is there this the mass presence of material quantity of material it is not volume not so volume it is the quantity of material which actually changes the capacitance of this plate. So, the quantity is basically nothing but the mass of material ok and the capacitance is proportional to the mass of material change. So, capacitance it is not change it is a capacitance of the material of this capacitor is proportional to the mass. If mass changes then capacitance change that means, are we measuring mass? No, we are not measuring mass we are measuring certain value of capacitance value which we know it is a proportional to the mass of the material we are not we from this instrument the negative point is that from this principle we cannot get the value actual count of the yarn. We cannot get the actual mass per unit length of the yarn x bar we cannot get although we get the variation this is the, but variation we want. So, this instrument this capacitance principle although it measures the variability in terms of mass per unit length, but it it is only limited to that. So, this instrument it is not expect we cannot expect to give the value of mass per unit length it will not give it will only give the variation. So, because capacitance is actually it is proportional to mass so k m this k value is unknown, k value is unknown, k depends on various factors. It depends on the material, depends on the moisture content, depends on many things, the twist level depend on the. So, k for a material for a yarn for a particular yarn 
for uh, tested under particular condition, particular TM, particular fiber, K is constant. So, with that assumption, we can measure only the variability. I will just come. And the yarn is passed through the parallel plate capacitor in continuous fashion. Okay. And one thing is important, the it is indirect method of measuring the change in mass per unit length. So, what is the unit length? Now, say this is the capacitor plate and through which our material is passing yarn or slobbing and this is passing through this and the length of the capacitor plate is this and normally in normal evenness tester it is typically 1 centimeter. That means, at any instance and any instance the value. So, this it is moving at speed of v the value which the c is getting which is proportional to the mass, this mass of this quantity of yarn within this, this is the quantity. What is this quantity length? The length here is this much length, the k the c is not taking care of any length any yarn which is beyond this, it is not taking care of, it is only concerned with the yarn which is within this zone. And this condition here is that yarn is the whatever yarn roving or sliver there is in straight moving, moving at straight line. That means, the length between this it is a 1 centimeter length which is a unit length and this mass of 1 centimeter that means, the C is proportional to the mass of this quantity. Now, how is it taking then C of next value? So, C 1 is that this portion, this is portion 1. Now, as it is moving continuous suppose now let me draw once again, this is the capacitor plate and then the material is moving, this is the material at moving at known speed v. Now, here this this is say 1 centimeter, this is actually measuring the capacitance for this mass. Okay. So, k m 1, this is 1 unit 1. Now, next it should get, it should take the mass of this unit. Okay. Now, how will it take? So, it, it has certain speed. Now, by that speed after certain time delta t this portion will reach here. Now, the delta t is the frequency that is the that is the time interval for the next reading that is automatically adjusted. So, for next reading what it will do? It will not take the data of this overlap portion, it will take data of the next portion. So, that we can adjust or maybe after certain distance, okay, any any distance after that. And but once it is taking the data, the software it is sending the signal, capacitance signal, that signal is actually the mass proportional to the mass of 1 centimeter that is the length of the capacitor. So, that mass is say m 2 k m 2 k m 1 k m 2 k m 3 in this way it will keep on sending the data and large number of data c 1 c 2 c 3 it is only giving the value of c some electrical signal, but we know that value is proportional to the mass value of that. Okay. Now, we have not yet got the 
exact value of mass ok we have got only the proportional of mass that is why here we are talking about only change in capacitance ok electron we, we are talking about the variability of the material. Now, this is the principle here it is the measuring head and here the length is 1 centimeter as I have mentioned here and signal processing display unit, recording unit, printer everything is there and then a change in mass of the dielectric okay? change in mass of the dielectric material like in our case it is a yarn non conductive yarn material in the condenser changes it is a capacitance. So, capacitance is changing which is proportional to the mass of the material. Okay. So, k m is their capacitance and if the material is drawn at a constant speed through the condenser continuously the change in capacitance will follow the variation in mass per unit length that I have already mentioned and the unit length being here it is the length of the capacitor for this Worcester tester it is a for normal most of the witness tester it is a 1 centimeter. Okay. And also one thing one should remember here once we are getting once we are getting the data of consecutive 1 centimeter, okay. once we are getting the data of consecutive answer k m 1, k m 2, k m 3. Now, if I want to measure now what we will do? We will measure the variability, variability in terms of C V percent or percentage mean deviation and we will see if we measure the C V percent or percentage mean deviation the as we are will be dividing with the mean standard deviation as we will be dividing standard deviation with mean or mean deviation with mean. So, in that case you will see standard deviation will be proportional to k, k multiplied by something a mean will be k multiplied by something. So, the, this k will get cancelled out in both the cases as k is getting cancelled out. So, we do not have any problem whether it is a mass variation or capacitance variation or any electrical signal variation it is giving us exactly same data because we are talking about the only the variation. So, the this type of instruments indirect measurement will only give the variability in terms of C V percent or in terms of P M D percent mean division where the constant factor gets cancelled out. We are getting actual variation. Okay. Now, here it is a 1 centimeter length. So, now can we get in using this instrument can we get the various so the percentage mean. So, now let, let me tell you one uh, important I we can I can explain one important phenomena in this instrument. Suppose this instrument it is working <coughs> running at the speed of say 400 meter per minute okay, 400 meter per minute and this 400 meter per minute. So, for it is running for 1 minute. using this instrument suppose we have got one u percent or C v percent. The percent wise it is exactly giving the value of m 1 m 2 m 2. Now, if I ask you I will give you the yarn is for uh, 1 meter it is tested. So, it is a 400 meter is being tested okay, through this capacitance plate through this capacitance. So, the total length of yarn is 400 meter and I have got one value. So, for u percent I have got say 10 percent u percent this in yarn has got u percent of 10. Okay. Now, I am telling you I will give you the same same portion. So, 400 meter is tested I have collected the 400 meter 
in a bobbin properly kept and I am giving you the yarn can you get can you calculate u percent without using this this machine in this instrument only using the cutting and weighing method and reaching to this value it is possible it is possible first thing we must know what is the this length of the capacitor. Now, length of the capacitor we know it is a 1 centimeter now 1 centimeter. Now, this total 400 meter meter yarn what I will do I will cut in 1 centimeter length each. So, how many the such pieces will be there in 1 meter there will be 100 pieces and 400 meter will have 4000 40000 pieces of such masses i am talking about the theoretically so it will be m1 m2 m3 m4 like m40000 then 40000 small pieces i will take what i will do i will take the mass of individual m1 by weighing in a micro balance then we have the real data then i will what i will do i will measure the mean deviation using the formula then i will measure the percentage mean deviation and i should get the value 10% so that's why this say although this will give us be give us the value theoretically, but it is practically not possible we will get exactly same value using the indirect technique of measurement and that to within 1 minute and value wise it is exactly same only difference is that in this process in my process of measurement I can tell the yarn is the count of the yarn is 30 ticks because I know I have the value of the mass per unit length, but here it will not give the exact value, okay, that's, but it will serve its purpose because this, this technique is not for measurement the yarn count, the technique is the measure for the measurement the variability of yarn. Okay. That is the basic concept we must know and also this instrument not only give the variation in 1 centimeter although 1 centimeter is the minimum length we can and unit length we can have variability of any cut length. So, u percent is the variability of the cut length what is the cut length here cut length is 1 centimeter if I want to have want to measure the variability of 10 centimeter cut length its machine has done its per, uh, function now the thing is the software software function what software will do software will only add the this capacitance value of first time. So, k m 1 plus m 2 up to 10 m 10 that will be for 10 centimeter then k m 11 m 20 second reading. So, in this way it will give. So, instead of 1 centimeter 1 centimeter suppose it was getting uh, 40,000 uh, reading if we try to increase the length then it will get the value number of value will be less. So, in this way we can get at different cut length it will give the the unevenness value okay. and next is that unit length here is 1 centimeter. Now, try to see here if the material is drawn const at constant speed through the condenser continuously the change in capacitance will follow the variation of mass per unit length. So, it is capacitance change it is actually it is ex exactly it will follow the mass per unit length variation. Now, how to calculate the then u percent from this curve here this is the 
variation in mass per unit length as all actually are you are getting the capacitance value only thing it is a factor of k. So, factor of k we know and this is the a, a means area of this shaded portion. If we know the mean value now, now the mean is another problem. Now, how does the instrument know the mean value? You must if you see the Worcester or any windless tester carefully, once it is started, the instrument is started, the screen it remains blank and during initial few seconds it tries to actually get the data of mean capacitance value. And then once it gets the mean capacitance value based on large number of initial data, it plots the this type of curve. This is the mean value, okay. mean value of this apparent mean value then accordingly it keeps on plotting keeps on plotting. Now, the thing is that suppose there is a yarn, there is yarn initially it is a thin yarn and after that it has got say actual yarn, actual yarn thin by, by some mistake okay, initial portion thin yarn. Now, if we place if we test this yarn in say Worcester machine or any evenness tester, suppose this yarn is moving like this in the capacitance tester it is moving. So, within the initial length it has actually gauged the mean value. So, this has been plotted. So, this is immediately plotted within few second. So, the by that time it was moving. So, then it is started actual plotting up to this point it is plot, then we will see suddenly it has increased. This type of plots are possible. This shows there is a major problem in the yarn. Suddenly you will find suddenly it is coming out. So, this plot is known as diagram. Diagram I will just explain it tells a many thing which no other plot gives even the spectrogram. I okay. will just explain. Now, area under the curve what is that area under the curve? Area under the curve this is A which is nothing but the summation of the mean deviation that uh, deviation of from the mean. So, this if you keep on adding th this is the mean and this deviation this x minus x bar this x is the mean this is the summation of deviation from mean and it is taken the it is the it is taken the mod value. So, this is the actual area. So, if, if you talk about this and that divided by the t value okay, that is by the number of read t what does it does t means t shows t shows the number of readings are taken <coughs> t is with the time this is a time axis but this time is proportional to the number of reading okay now this t this divided by t number of reading it's called the mean deviation so what we are getting we measure the area and then divided by number of reading that is in proportional to t that gives the mean deviation if we divide it by x that is the mean value that will be and multiplied by 100 it is giving the mass actually the u percent. Now, here it is interesting here if we see this x and x bar it has got a component of k that is it is giving the actually it is a capacitance value it has got the component of a k if we take out the k k outside then this will be the m value mass okay 
and this k value and here also it is k is there with that x value mean value. So, this k will get cancelled out. So, ultimately it is basically if we take the u percent of percentage mean deviation of capacitance value and percentage mean deviation of mass value the meaning the actual value will be same actual numerical it is same. Okay. Similarly, coefficient of variation is also coefficient of variation it is the deviation in standard and then under root okay. uh, that is the standard deviation divided by mean is the standard deviation we can write in this form and this is the mean and here also it is the k value gets cancelled out. And for normal distribution we have seen C v is related with mu u value it is by 1.25 times. Now, coming to one of the most important uh, uh, graph picture which gives the diagram. So, the graphical representation of mass per unit length variation along the length of sliver roving or yarn is reflected as diagram. It indicates the nature of variability present in the material. Now, this is a this is one diagram. Okay. Now, another yarn is having diagram like this. From this looking at this diagram we can make out which one is more even. Clearly, we can see that this yarn red it gives poorer actually evenness. Okay. This yarn green it is even. So, he similarly in this picture this diagram okay, diagram this one it is even yarn although there is a variation it is even, but this yarn 2 this one bottom it gives very high variation it is not that even. Okay. Next is that we get the a large number of information large uh, very wide information from the just simply looking at the diagram which we cannot get like long wavelength variation even with the periodic variation which spectrogram cannot give like the yarn is that spectrogram only gives the variation which is repeating several time. Suppose we are testing 400 meters of yarn in 1 meter, if it repeats minimum say, say 6 to 8 times or 10 times then only spectrogram will show there is a variation. Because spectrogram amplitude vertical that axis x axis the it is a basically it is a histogram placed very close to each other and that vertical the, the height it is nothing but the number of times the fault gets repeated. If it repeats only once the spectrogram will not show, but if we see very carefully the diagram. So, this is some total length is 400 meter very long length. Okay. Now, if the diagram is like this, this is the diagram. Now, this diagram 
if we see the diagram carefully of the total length of the yarn, this will give there is a very long uh, that uh, wavelength, longer wavelength and it is its periodic variation. And this variation, this type of periodic city that the spectrogram will never show. And we can see the nature of the wave and we can analyze this. Another variation is that suppose the yarn is running, it is moving perfectly, it is it's testing, it is going on. Suddenly, in drop frame somewhere, there was some uh, double sliver came, extra sliver came there, and it is reflected, and that was for long detail, longer length. It will not reflect in any other picture, but in that case, diagram will show like this for say hundreds of meters, then suddenly it. So, this type of sudden change in mean value will be shown in diagram only, not with other type of management. Okay. So, long variation even with the periodic variation with which spectrogram cannot confirm, spectrogram will give some idea, but it cannot confirm extreme thin or thick places as I have just shown extreme thick places it will show it is a very high thick place and that even um, in other uh, data we cannot get only uh, visually the diagram will tell the yarn has got extreme thin place or extreme thick place sudden change in thick place. So, changes and step changes in the mean value. So, mean value has suddenly stepped up or stepped down. So, all these variations we cannot get from other method of measurement. Okay. In many cases, it can confirm the numerical value of the instrument. So, looking at this value, looking at the type of the graph like I will show last one. Now, here this two yarns are there, definitely this yarn will give higher u percentage. So, that numerically by without looking at the data, if we have this values, this value, this is very useful. Data is actually that particular value, it is independent on various factors, but if we see the, the diagram, we can make out okay, this yarn is very good, we can go for this yarn. Okay. This is inferior quality. So, it can actually confirm the numerical value okay. and we will stop here. In next class, we will continue with this with there are various um, ways of expressing the unevenness. Okay. Thank you.